Okay. If there's no questions, we're gonna I'm gonna quickly kind of review some of the stuff we did yesterday, and then I'm gonna give you guys a group worksheet to work on that reviews what we're about to talk about. Um, just kind of quickly here. So, if I give you a graph. Let's do, yeah, true. Um, okay, sure. All right, if I give you a graph, first off, how do you know that's a function? Passes the vertical inverse. Passes the vertical inverse. How do you know that it has an inverse? It passes the horizontal. Passes the horizontal inverse. And again, this is kind of neat how it kind of built back on itself, but eventually we got to a point where we realized all inverses do is they flip over y equals x. So instead of flipping the function and then checking, we just flip the test, right? Vertical line test, horizontal line test, they're actually sort of the same. The horizontal line test just says if you flipped it, would it still be a function? So this passes the horizontal line test, so if I flip it, I'll still have a function. So now the shit do I flip it? What do I actually do? What points does this go through? So we'll call this that place. Like 0, 1. Huh? Negative 3. All right, negative 3, 2. Oh, wait, sorry, 0. Wait, no. Negative 2. Negative 3, negative 2. Oh, I see. Where, where does that actually go? I mean, not where the inverse goes. 0, negative 1. Okay. One, two, one, two. One, two. Good. So what's the inverse going to do? So it's going to go through the point. Negative two, negative three. Negative two, negative three. Negative one, zero. Negative one, zero. Two, one, one. Two, one. So negative two, negative three. Negative one, zero. And two, one. You get that funky thing going on. And again, this is where we saw visually, and then we talked about why it makes sense. The sucker is actually, look at all these colors. It's symmetric to y equals x, right? It's a beautiful, especially if I could do straight lines, it'd be great. Uh, mirror right there, right? <coughs> so what is that? Is everybody cool with what's happened so far? Or at least you would be able to do this yourself, right? Because you better be able to, because I'm gonna test you on uh, how to test you. Um, so what? This means, if I have a function, let's say I have a function like this. Um, when I flip that, can anyone tell me what's interesting it's about that? It's going to be its own inverse. It's going to flip right on top of itself, correct? In fact, any function, I need this to be understood. Because this is really weird to students when you do this for the first time. There's going to be some problems in the homework. You're going to find the inverse. It's going to be the same as what the original function was. Any function that is already symmetric to this will be its own inverse. Does that graphically make sense? If I flip it, both of these around the y equals x line, don't they remain the same? No. Are you with me? Okay. I like it. Most functions, most functions, if I flip it over this line, they're not going to be the same function anymore. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. But there are some functions that are already symmetric. This one, by the way, is, does anyone know what this function is here? It's 1 over x. And if I, so how do I, if somebody flip, if I have the number three and somebody comes over and flips it, and makes it one third, I'm like, ah, how do I undo what they did? Just flip it back. Flip it again. Yeah. Yes? So how do I undo a flip? Do another flip. So it's its own inverse. Does that make any sense? Anything. When I plug a three into this, what do I get? What do we get? One third. One third. What do we get when I plug a one-third in? What's one divided by one-third? One. One divided by one-third. One one I love you guys so much. 
Real quick. Real quick. Go with, go with me just for a second. I really, this is interesting. You guys ready? Okay. You know, like, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you if it's interesting. Okay. What's 10 divided by 2? Because I can break 10 up into 5 twos. Correct? Does that make sense? So 1 divided by 1 third, how many 1 thirds can you break 1 up into? 3. So 1 divided by 1 third is 3. You guys with me? I mean, does that, think about it. Come on. This is so cool. This is an example of math not giving a shit what the numbers are. The process doesn't change. Division just says how many of, of uh, these can you break this up into? How many things can you break the top into in terms of the bottom? 10 divided by 2 is 5 because I can break 10 up into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2s. 1 divided by 1 third is 3 because I can break 1 up into 1, 2, 3 thirds. Is that all right? Is that cool? Have you ever thought about it that way? No, you're all like, we're not that crazy, Jeff. Okay. You're the crazy one here, Jeff. So one divided by one third is three. Did it just undo itself? Yes. It took three and it made it a third. If I give it a third, it makes it three. It undid itself. Didn't I end up back where I started? So it's its own inverse. So graphically, you can tell something its own inverse if it's already symmetric to the mirror. You guys kind of with me? If it's already symmetric to the mirror and I flip it, it's the same damn thing. It doesn't change, yeah. So with all like negative linear terms, that be like infinity? Anything of the form a minus x, for example, will be its own inverse. So there's a problem in the book about 2 minus x, and you do the work, and you'll, you'll end up with its own inverse. And why does that make sense? Well, what's 2 minus 7? Some of you guys have heard this. What's 2 minus 7? Negative 5, correct? So input of 7 gives me an output of negative 5. What's 2 minus negative 5? 2 minus negative 5. 7. 7. So it takes it right back to where it started. It undoes itself. Do you guys understand? What's an inverse function do? It takes the function's output and brings it back to what the input was. It undoes what the function did. Some functions are their own inverses. They undo themselves. Okay, remember. So generally, finding an inverse graphically, you have to be to the point where it's just easy. It just, I, I, I know as a math teacher, I try not to say it too often because it's not true for everybody, but holy shit, right? If you collect the points it goes through and just flip them, regraph it, and then visually you can make sure it makes sense. Why does that make sense? Because it is reflecting around that line there, right? You can kind of check your work graphically. Okay, how are we doing? You get a chance to do one yourself in a minute. So what if I give it to you as a function, not as a graph? So for example, um, Let's do one that's kind of gross. Sure. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Very quickly, does anyone know roughly what this would look like if I graphed it? Parabola. Isn't it? Or, hmm? or no, sorry, not a parabola. Not a parabola. It would be a yeah, yeah, cactus, right? Let me see. From your perspective, yeah, this is right here. Yeah. You guys with me? Real quick. Why? If I have a square, it can't go negative, so it goes, oh, shit. If I have a cube, it can be negative all, oh, okay, okay. It can be negative outputs, correct? So it looks like a parabola that fell out, right? Again, had a good or a bad night, I don't know. You guys kind of with me? All right, so <coughs> knowing that, isn't this just moving that around? Do you guys see that now? If I ask you whether the transformation's happening here, could you tell me? Well, it got moved up to the right three. Right three. Oh, somebody yeah. else? Double the outputs. Down seven. So I would just take this, move it right three, double, stretch it, double the outputs, and then move it down. It's still the same stupid. So why does this have an inverse? Why would this have an inverse if it basically looks like this? What does it pass? Oh, you're doing, yeah, okay. Horizontal line test, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, um, what do you mean by double? Say again, sorry? What do you mean by double? 
Yeah, yeah. So right there, whatever the output would be, wouldn't this just double it? So effectively, this is what the book calls is stretching it. You make it four. Yep. So I'd move every point, I would move it back, oh, that's right, right three, double the output, and then move it down seven. That's how we get that. So it's the same shape as my point. So I know it's going to have an inverse because it passes the horizontal line test. How the hell do I find the inverse? Does anyone remember the steps? There's two steps, really. Yeah, bring the y back. Those, what did you say? Zero or? All right, bring the y back, right? The y is here, correct? We just called it f of x for some good reasons, but we're going to bring y back. Does anyone remember the next step to find yeah, the inverse? Take the x and put it where the y is. Take the y Here's the beautiful the thing. How do I find an inverse graphically? Switch the x and y, correct? How do I find the inverse algebraically? Switch the x and y. It's just silly. Of course, that should not be surprising because that's the idea of an inverse. It takes the output and makes it the input, and vice versa. So that's why me, I draw a little line here just reminding myself, you're not doing algebra, Jeff. You're applying an idea. right? You don't have to make the little dotted line if you don't want to. So I switch the x and y. So everybody understand, in general, you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> This is the process to find the inverse. I'm not trying to solve it, I'm not trying to simplify it, I'm trying to find the inverse. I'm also trying to remove my cap. So then, how do I solve this? How do I simplify, how do I get this y by itself? That's the very first thing I want to do. Where's my y piece at, which term? Is it my y piece in here? So I want to get that by itself. So what do I want to move? Add seven. You guys see that? Add seven. Add seven. All right. What's next? So you got to divide by two. Divide by two, because here's my y piece now. My y piece, I want to divide by two. Let me bring it up here. So are you with me so far? Um, all right, what's next? Cube root. Cube root. Yes. Last step. Add three. Add three. So if I add three, I'll get the inverse function. So I call it by add three, add three, I get this, and that's the inverse function. So again, there's nothing specific about the how I solve this, it's just you solve it, whatever the hell's going on, you solve it. The big key thing is this step right here. Switch the X and Y, and then whatever the hell's going on, solve it. Yes? Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, 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 good. I love it, real quick. If I put a number into this function, what is the last thing I'll do? What's the last thing it wants me to do? If I put a number in here, what's the last thing I would do to calculate the answer? If I put a 10 in there, I would do some shit. What's the last shit I would do? Minus seven. Minus seven is very with me. That's order operations. Minus seven is the last thing I'll do. What is the first thing I do when I put a number into the inverse? First thing I do, add seven. Doesn't that match up with what the opposite function should do? It should do the opposite operations in the opposite order, right? Maybe? Screw you, Jeff. Do you have to know that? No. 
I finished the problem and then we talked about that. You don't have to know that. You don't have to guess what's going to happen. You just do it. Multiplying by 2, what's it doing over here? Multiplying by 2. Cubing, what's it doing here? Okay, right? <laughs> do you guys know? Right. Do you know do you, again, do you have to understand what I just said? No. But that's the, that's the idea. It's doing all the opposite stuff in the opposite order. So, of course, it is the opposite function. Opposite is actually not specific enough, which is why we call it the inverse function. But opposites like everyday language, so that's what all the normies say out here. Okay. All the non math. All the math muddles. Alright. Is that alright so far? Okay. Uh, let me see. Do I have your kids? Anything? No, Oh, uh, no, real quick. I also put on here, since we did this last time, I put some solving radical equation stuff on here. I'm just going to give it to you and see what happens. Here we go. Um, and just because you guys <coughs> don't always seem to want to do this, I'm going to put you in the groups. Rawr, because I'm evil. Can we, let's see if we can do this. I have faith in you guys. Um, can we like, like you three turn around? Oh shit, look at this giant group. Can you guys turn around? You know what I'm saying? You guys turn around. Uh, this is where things are going to get interesting. I'll figure it out. Uh, you guys turn around. Uh, you guys come over here. You, you three back there, you with me? And then you four over there, yes? Okay, okay. Huh? Turn around. Work with the people behind you. We can do this. I have faith. Everybody in here should know what this looks like. Y squared. Can you draw what this looks like in the air for me? All right, there we go. So it basically has this shape, right? Real quick, just because this will make some of this easier to talk about. What the hell does that look like? Why does this look like this? What do I get when I try to put negative numbers into this guy? It doesn't work. It's not it's real. Imaginary. It's imaginary. Do you guys want to do the whole? <laughs> Lift this thing up and get a bunch of colors thing. Nope. Okay. So we'll keep it real. Right? This guy, what happens when I put a negative number in? It goes down. Yeah, exactly. It's, a, it's walk like an Egyptian, right? So, I don't know. You kids still know this song? There it is. Okay. Plus old people. We get it. So, what's the cube root of one? One. <laughs> 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, so the cube root of 1 is 1. What's the cube root of 8? 2. Yeah, you can kind of tell from what I just put on the graph. What's the cube root of 0? 0. What's the cube root of negative 1? Negative 1. And again, why? Because it takes 3 negative 1s to multiply by negative 1. What's the cube root of negative 8? Negative 2. Holy shit. 
So what shape does it have? Now very quickly, what does that look like kind of fell over? What graph does that look like that just maybe sort of fell over? It looks a little bit like the cubish, right? Why does it look like a cubish? Because it's the reflection of a cubish, right? I don't know if you guys are with me. What's the inverse of cubing? I'm sorry, cube rooting? It's cubing. Yeah, way to give the game away, John. So of course this thing looks like a cube that fell over, because that's basically what inverses do. They kind of fall over. They go around the y equals x line. All right. So what does that mean, John? Is this invertible? Does it pass the horizontal line test? Yes. All day, every day. So these two are invertible. What about this one? No. What shape does this have? Yeah, is that pass the horizontal line test? No. No. Silly thing. Okay, so that's not invertible. <clears throat> oh. By the way, before I forget, <laughs> I told Steve I'm going to find a different room. I just need to sit down. Yesterday was insane. We are going to actually move. We're going to change rooms. Uh, don't worry. We're going to meet here, and then I'll take you to the new room. I'll put a little map on canvas, blah, blah, blah. Right? It'll help Steve, and it'll help me. Because I don't want to be lecturing while his kids are taking the test. That, I don't want that to happen either. Right? Say again? In this building, yes, dear God. We might even get like two working doors, but don't. <laughs> we'll probably get like half. One door works half the time. So that's basically, but we'll see. Um, okay. How about this guy? How do I find the inverse given a function? What's my first step? Y. Bring the y back. And then I do, like Mike said, just straight up switch those. Yes, sir. Right. Now that feels like cheating. It feels like, why should I be able to do that? Because that's the freaking idea of an inverse. Graphically, it's what we do. So, of course, algebraically, it's what we do. It's beautiful. There's not as much to memorize. You just do the same damn thing. Switch the x and y. Here, I got one more thing to do, though, because it's computational. I have to actually solve for y. So what do I do? Plus one. Holy shit. And then I... Divide by two. Divide by two. So if I look at the inverse, does it do all the opposite functions in the opposite order? Yeah, this one doubled first. This one divides by two laps. This one minus one first, second. This one adds one first. All the opposite operations, opposite order. Yeah. Okay. So then what do I do here? Same. It is invertible like we just talked about. So I bring the y back, switch the x and y. And this is where people got a little tripped up, but it's you're constantly saying to yourself, when trying to solve for a variable, you say, is my variable stuck in something? Then you kill that thing. <laughs> yeah, you cube both sides so that you can get access to these guys, right? Cube both sides. Holy shit, John. These kill each other. Let me show you something. Show me shot, 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 shot. Let me show you something kind of cool. Sorry, guys, if you're writing it down. Just real quick, this is a very good thing to know in general, okay? Um, you ready for 12, your mark? So what's 10 minus 2? It's 8. Amazing. What's 10 minus 8? Holy shit. So see how these can switch? What does that work for, every number ever? What are variables, numbers I don't know yet? How should they act, like any other damn number, because it's all they are? So what's a very quick way to solve this for y? Switch these. Done. Now you could subtract one, divide by negative. That's where a lot of you guys were tripping up, because negative screw us over every chance they can get, <coughs> right? Or maybe not. If you're lucky enough that they don't, hey, I'm jealous. They screw me over. But, so I just avoid worrying about it. If that didn't make any sense, you could do exactly what you did. Uh, subtract one, divide by a negative one, signs change, you do get this answer, yes? Now how should I really write this? That is the answer, but how should I identify it? What symbol should I use? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. So how should I identify it? G inverse of x is 1 minus x cubed. 
I'm not going to take points off. I'm just going to say G and verse, you know. You guys, in this one we didn't have to worry about. It's always nice. Give us more of that, Jeff. Please don't fall into the trap of thinking you can eyeball this. You will make mistakes. So the easiest way to do this is just collect what the points are at the, in the first place. See if Jeff can see this. See if Jeff can talk about himself in third person. Negative mm -hmm. five zero. What is this one? Five. Is that five five? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then what's this guy? This is seven. Seven ten. Mm -hmm. So what's the inverse going to do? Push up. Crazy. Negative seven. Negative ten. Zero. Negative five. Five five. Ten seven. So seven. Negative ten. Zero, negative five. Five, five. Wait a minute, Jeff. Negative seven. Oh, negative got lost. Yeah. Sorry. Negative seven, negative ten. Let's try this again. My poor little negative got lost. Negative seven, negative ten. That's better. Yeah. Zero, negative five, 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 ten, seven. So let's see if this looks the way it's supposed to. See how it's already a mirror kind of image there? Yeah. That That's good. where it's hitting the mirror. <coughs> so it looks like a little bug, maybe. A little bug. You guys with me? <clears throat> Number 3A needs to be very straightforward. Did I turn that? Yeah, I think it did. 3A? They're not a Square. Yeah, I want to kill that square root because that's where my x is stuck. So if I kill it, I can get at it. So I square both sides, so then I get 2x minus 3 equals 25. What kills me is I'll get a student do this. They'll square both sides, and then they'll write this, and then they'll square this, and they'll just, and then they'll, sometimes they'll complete the square. And I'm like, no, no, no. The very first thing that happened is the square you put dies. It's not there anymore, correct? You guys with me? <coughs> and then it, and then this is just a couple steps. Add three, divide by two. If you check it, it'll work. I kind of knew that already because radical equals positive number should have an answer, yes? What's wrong? Now, why was part A easy versus part B? Two reasons. It's not that hard, but it's definitely a little harder. Yeah, I don't care how nice it is, it's a little bit harder. Eventually, but you don't know that at first. Why could I square immediately here? Exactly, because the radical was alone, right? Remember to be a good tyrant, you isolate the radical element, and then you kill it, right? For the day that you are a tyrant. If you are, just, I don't know. I don't know if I want to hear from you. So what do I have to do to get the, app, the radical by itself? Isolate it. True. How do I do that? You add x. Add x. Kick, kick ass. Okay. And real quick. Real quick. I get somebody to do this, and they'll write this. And of course, this will end up having funky ass answers. And they're like, Jeff, why'd you have to make such a hard problem? No, no, no. You made it hard. What did they do wrong? Didn't yeah, add the single x to the other side. First. Sure, but what did they do wrong? They cube the x on on that side. So if I square one side, or square, not I cube. have to square the square. other side, right? Wouldn't I have to foil this thing? Yeah. Do you guys see how the radical would still be alive in the middle term? Do you guys see that? That would so suck. Not only is the radical still alive, but you've introduced a lot of extra shit that you didn't need. To. So if I get the radical by itself first, I can then attack the radical directly. Yep. The next mistake I see people make is right here. They'll tell me this is x squared plus 9, but that's insane, right? Or at uh, least a little crazy. You gotta boil it out. Yeah. How do you square anything? Multiply by itself. So then you get x squared plus 6x plus 9. Is that cool? Yeah. Let me stop for a minute. Make both sides one side equals zero. So one big trick about mathematics is I don't give a shit where I started. All that matters is where I am. 
It sounds like a life lesson to me. You guys got it? Ignore this shit. It doesn't matter. This is where I am. What is telling me what to do next? The fact that I have an X that has a higher power than one or a different power than one. So I have to get it equal to? Zero. Zero. And then factor. Right. Doesn't matter where it came from. Doesn't matter what kind of problem this is. This is what I'm working with. And it's telling me what to do. Get it equal to zero and then factor. Because I can't get my X shit together. If that wasn't there, I can get my X shit together. Nope. Okay. So then I... Subtract one, add, is this cool for me to do a couple of things? Yeah. Because I want to cancel both of these so it's zero. Did anybody factor this yet? Yeah. No. X plus one, X plus eight. So then what's your possible answer to get? Yeah. You put it negative X plus eight. eight. Oops, sorry. Yeah. X equals negative one or negative eight. Yeah. Now you can't just circle those, right? What do you have to do? Check them. In the original, always in the original. Don't, especially don't plug them here. Because shit's happened before here, right? You always plug in your checks in the original. So, yeah, I'll do it on the board one. What do I get when I put in negative one in? <clears throat> negative three times negative one is? Four. Sure, and then so I get, that's minus, what was it, negative one? There it is, yeah. So I get two plus one is three, on this side, I get three, and on that side, there's a three. Check. So that works. So, so far, this is good. What if I put in negative eight in? I'll get square root of one minus three times negative eight minus negative eight. 25. 25, which is five. Square root of 25 is five plus eight. Is that equal to three? No. No. So therefore, this no good, no bueno. Yes. Oh, what makes this zero? Yeah. Or set it equal to zero. Subtract one. Set it equal to zero. Subtract eight. Good. How's everybody? Compared to some stuff we've done so far, that should be really good. And again, why did math give me an answer that didn't work? Because in order to even get any answers, I have to do something weird. <coughs> Let me see if anybody gets this. If I make x negative 8, isn't that a negative number? Isn't that saying a square root equals a negative number? That can't happen. But I didn't know that until I got to there. Then I'm like, oh, that answer is no good. But I did get an answer. I don't know if you guys are it does kind of suck on one level because you're like, why did math give me a wrong answer? Well, because the only way to get any freaking answers was to do something weird. I lost information about whether this is negative or not when I squared it. So it might introduce extra answers, but at least I got the right answer with some extra shit. That's a good trade-off as opposed to no answer. Okay, maybe. Maybe it's not a big deal. I don't know. Yeah. What I need to see is this. I need, and let me put it on the paper so it's the same wherever you look around the room. This, this. I need to see the possible answers, and then I need to see the idea that you actually checked any of this. I don't necessarily need to see the check work, yeah? Don't just not write negative eight. Then I'm, I'm like, do you even know that was a possibility? I don't know. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so. That finishes officially chapter three. What? Three, three, six, three, five. Three, seven. That's three, what we seven. just did. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about linear functions, which seems to be just in time for some of your chemistry students. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do a lot with this. You're gonna have to ask me questions. I'm gonna go a little quickly because I'm assuming we all know some of the basics about slope and y-intercept and all that. Yes. If you don't, ask questions. If you don't feel comfortable asking questions, come see me during office hours. Um, Can 
anybody tell me the general equation of a line? General what? The general equation of a line. Yeah, so that's, officially that's the slope intercept form, but it's the most useful form. And I love the name. Math people are so good at naming things. Let's call it a slope and a line, or we'll call it a slope intercept. Oh, yeah, okay, good job. Which piece is the slope? M. No, which piece is the slope? X? M. M. That's what I just said. I know, but oh. several people answered. Oh, okay. Is everybody with me? M is the slope. What's B? Y. The line intercept. Why? So it's where it comes to the Because that's how it is. Uh, that was yeah. good to me. Oh, okay. All right. Shit, my job is so easy. We don't have to explain anything. Is this all my job is? It's explaining shit. You guys are like, don't spend time explaining Because if you plug in the x intercept and the y intercept. How do you find the y intercept? By making it zero. zero. Yeah, so if I make x zero, you get b, so that's why it's the y intercept. It's crazy. Now, a much more interesting question, bless you, is why is that the slope? That's what the line's moving forward or backward. Okay, the positive negative part of it makes some sense, but why is it exactly equal to the slope? And what's the definition of the slope? Can somebody give me any definition of slope? Rise over run. Beautiful. Sorry, I overreact. <laughs> Rise over run. Does that sound familiar? Have you guys ever driven down? Have I talked about this already with you guys? Yeah. Driven down, I'm thinking about the one, I think it's, uh, shit, Jeff. Because as you're going, leaving Golden, uh, what do you call that area? I used to live there. South Park, you're leaving the South Park, and then you're going into downtown, and there's that giant freaking hill. Hill? Yeah. Where the hill am I from? That right? giant hill, you know? Uh, the rock climbing so, right? it is not posted there, but you sometimes you'll see signs about grade grade of the road, right? So have you ever done, I remember when I first went round trip and I went into the mountains for the very first time and I saw like a runaway truck ramp and you see these 7%, 8% grade signs. Has anybody ever seen those before? Okay, I think there's one in Mission, I used to live in Mission Hills and there's a hill there, it's like 12% grade or something, it's insane. Are you guys kind of, so what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, real quick, if I had a 12% grade in the road, what is 12% as a ratio? What does percent mean? 12 over. 12 over 100. This would be the slope. So every, every 100 foot forward, I would go 12 foot up or down, depending on which way on the road I'm going, correct? That doesn't sound like much, but when you start to multiply by how fast we might be going, that's why it's such an extreme amount. If you've ever gone hiking on a 12% grade, that's sort of becoming mountain climbing. For every Every, Every 12 feet up or down, I move 100 feet left or right. So for every 100 feet I go forward, I'm dropping 12 foot. That's what that means. Are you guys with me? Do you guys know what that meant? Some of you guys, I think, intuitively knew what the sign meant was like how quickly this, this is dropping away or going up. That's interesting. But that is the slope, right? Okay. That's all a side note. Here, um, <coughs> rise over run. So that means for every step in the x direction, the y will go up or down depending on this is negative or positive by that much. So for example, if I had a slope of three uh, over two, for every two steps in the left or right, so every two steps in the x direction, I'm gonna go three up. So every two steps over, three steps up. You guys with me? All right, this is all stuff you should know. That would be the same as the y2 minus y1. Yeah, good. So the next kind of definition would be more algebraic. So rise is wise. Not just because it rhymes, but that's a nice bonus. Rise is wise because the y axis is freaking up and down. So of course rise is wise. So if I have a point and I go to another point, how much does it rise is the difference in the y's, and how much does it run is the difference in the other one. In the x, sorry. Just wanted to make it rhyme. That's what I do. I teach math and I spit math. No, just like I do not know who's on my. Sure, uh, yeah, you'll see me 
spoken word, and I'll be involved in rap battles all the time. Um, how are we doing so far? Does this all sound familiar? So very quickly, uh, if I had a very specific function here, what did I just say about a slope of three halves? Rise is three, three right. while it runs two, correct? So if x changes by two, y should change by three, correct? Yeah. If it's negative, does it go to the left? Yeah, go. So we'll talk about that in a minute. So I have this equation. What do I get when I put a zero in? Zero, one. Y equals one. One. I love it. That's where it starts. Okay. If I let x change by two, Meaning, what am I going to put in now? If I let x change by 2, I'm going to put in 2. It's crazy. Yeah. The output should be 3 higher. Be four. And sure enough, if I make x 2, what do I get? The 2 is canceled. 3 plus 1? 4. 4, okay. So I like to think of this number. See how it's multiplying the x? So however much the x changes, this amplifies it. Yeah. I think of this as like an amplifier. Unless it's like negative or like one half, but you guys kind of follow what I'm saying? Kind of adjust how much you want x change to change y. That's why that is the slope. It is the multiplier of x. So of course it's going to kind of like take what x is doing and apply something to the y. Okay, okay that was a deeper dive than we needed, but oh, too bad for all of us. Um, so I don't have to make a freaking table of values to graph a line. Of course I don't. Without saying anything, uh, without saying anything, you identify the slope, the y-intercept, and then graph this line using that. Yes. Do it. Yeah. Don't say anything. and then graph using these. Okay. So you definitely should not be making a table of values. This is us getting better than that. What's the slope? Four thirds. Four thirds. And the y-intercept? Negative five. All right, now here's where I'm going to be. Like I'm like here. I'm a math teacher. It's not good enough. The y-intercept is a point. So when I ask you for the y-intercept, I need to be a little more precise. Zero. Yes, zero negative. So where do I start? Where do I plot four over three? You put three in to make it equal to. No, you don't do an x y table. I don't need any of that shit. Well, I only want to use this information. Oh, where do I start? And then you just raise it by four. Start at the y intercept. I have to start at the y intercept, and then I do that, right? So I plot a point on the line, zero negative five, right? And then what the slope tells me is how to move, so I come back to the path. I don't know if that makes any sense. So if I go four up, one, two, three, four, and three over, one, two, three, I get back to the path. Oh shit, make that big. Pretend like that's straight. You guys semi with me? Yeah. Okay. Every time I say this lesson, by the way, I always think about the movie <coughs> American Wolf in London where they left the road and then the bad things happened. If you've never seen the movie, you're fine. I'm sorry. Um, 
Okay, good. So I'm going to give you problems. Now, now, real quick, what would the first step be if I ask you all that same information, but the problem was, uh, let's do something other number than 4. Uh, 2x minus 3y equals 9. And I ask you all the same stuff. Yeah. It's not in the right forms for me to just eyeball the uh, slope and the y-intercept. So therefore, I've got to get in the right form. To get in the right form, I just solve for Okay, now you get into it. I'm kind of assuming this should be kind of stuff we came in with, but tell me if that's not true. Um, let me think. Did I leave anything out? Oh, yeah. Yeah, let me, oh yeah, I want to talk about negative slopes real quick. Oh yeah, and then we'll do it probably that way. We got this business. Got it. Oh, my memory's good today. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry, we'll do that now. Okay. Um, so, real quick, what if I had uh, negative 4 this s? Uh, sure, plus 1. Y intercept is 0, 1, is that cool? at what I just wrote and says, are you feeling okay, dude? It's the same shit. I'm like, okay, math. Slope looks at those two things very different. Yeah. What does this one say? I go to the left, four, up five. Mm. Down, Wait, down, down four. Down four. Down four. Right. right five. This one says up four, left. back five, left five, yeah. So if I go... Down four, one, two, three, four, over five. Or if I go up four, one, two, three, four, back five, it's the same stupid line. See that? You guys with me? You can understand what I'm saying? So, of course, if there's a path, this path, and I go from here to here, I want to be able to get back. So the slope works either direction that I want to go. So very quickly, watch this. If you had already drawn your graph, one, two, three, four, and this is the top of your paper, are you with me? You already drew it, you like it, looks great, looks better than mine, for damn sure. Um, and I have to graph this function, y equals three fifths x plus five, right? Oh, let's make it plus four, because I've already screwed up some. That function, that was the graph, all right. Y-intercept is four, where am I supposed to go from there? Yeah. Where am I supposed to go from there? Up three, ah, oh, come on. But what else is equal to positive three over positive five? Negative three over negative, negative five, because the negatives would cancel, correct? So this, mathematically, that's the same stupid thing, yes? So again, math is like, oh, whatever you want, man. But slope-wise, that's completely different. It still gets me back to the same line, but that would tell me to do what? Oh, down three. Something I'm actually physically capable of doing, right? So down three. And back five. Back five, yeah. Ooh, all right. You guys got it with me? Does that make sense? So be careful, though. What I always see if, when I give a negative slope, somebody does this. Very quickly, how can I determine just by looking at this graph that it's a negative slope? It's going freaking right. going down. So if I give you this problem and you have a graph like this, you know you're wrong. Correct? From the beginning. You know it's supposed to go down. This is bad if it's profit, yes? Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh shit. Right? You guys with me? Maybe? <coughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Um, let's see. By the way, by the way, do you see how this is kind of related to the difference between 
this and this. What is the big difference graphically between those two functions? One's upward, one one's downward. Yeah, this one's going up, this one's going down. Doesn't that feel like it's related to slope? That should be like a down slope, but that's not a first power, is it? So it's not really linear. In calculus, you'll talk about slopes of functions that aren't linear. And then that'll really be clear that is, that, that is related to the slope. But for right now, it's kind of interesting to point out, oh yeah, that negative there is kind of like the slope in a way. You guys yeah. all with you? That one's manic and that one's depressed. Okay, sure. <laughs> all right. And then this one is, remember to take the notes. Is that what it is? All right, we doing all right? Okay. All right, uh, let's see. Oh, but one last thing, I think. What's up? Oh, uh, I, I sort of did, but yeah. Uh, you would solve for y, correct? So what I would do is I would just switch these. 2x minus 9 over 3. Divide by 3. Now you know the slope, the y-intercept, you do exactly like we did earlier. So the only point of that problem was, if it's not already solved for y, you solve it for y. Yeah. And then you do all the same stuff we did. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, so let's see, last problem for today. This is my output for today. Um, what if I knew, so help me out, let me, let me see. If I need to construct a function, a, a, a line equation, what do you wish I would just tell you? If I want you to create an equation of a line, what do you wish I would tell you about the line? What are the two things? Well, yes? No y intercept, I love it. All right, so what if I don't give you either one of those things? What if instead I tell you this? Fine. By the way, I'm going to write this accidentally sometimes. So I'm just going to do it right now. That's equation. That's a quick way to write equation. Okay. Find the equation of the line going through. So we're going right through. Graph. Uh, negative one five and uh, two uh, uh, eight. Sure. So should we graph that first? No. no. Hell no. We can do eight minus five. Over. All right. So. Break down what we're doing. Uh, what two things do you need? The slope and the y. I need the slope. Can I get the slope? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Check. I would also enjoy having the y intercept. Did I give us the y intercept? No. If you guys understand, I want some motivation behind what we're about to do. Some of you guys might remember there's a second equation for a line that we normally teach. There's other equations. So there's y equals mx plus b, which is awesome because it's very compact to the point. But don't I need to know the y intercept to kind of be y able to use that directly? Y2 minus y1. So, real quick, guys, if I start from this equation, before I forget, what does the subscripts mean on there? What do the subscripts mean? How many points do I want to put in this thing? Four. Two. 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 two points. They each have two parts. So two points. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. You with me? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have a y piece and an x piece of one point, and a y piece and an x piece of the other point, correct? The only reason we have these dumb subscripts is just so I can subtract in the same way. I really need you to understand. If I subtract 8 minus 5 and 2 minus negative 1, I will get a different sign than if I subtract 8 minus 5 and negative 1 minus 2. I'll get a different sign. You guys see that? 2 minus negative 1 is positive. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative. So the function, this formula just says, whatever way you decide to subtract, stay that way. Doesn't matter which one's 2 or 1. Doesn't matter or shit. Right? So we'll do that in two different ways. Now, so that's going to be what we do here. Let me write that down. But to create a different 
uh, line equation. Does it matter for a straight line what points I pick? So if somebody, if, I, if there's a line, and somebody gives me a point, and they say, can you find the slope of it? I just need some other point, correct? It does not have to be a specific point. The little subscript means specific point, the second point I was given. But couldn't I pick any freaking point? So if I just put x, y, that means every point on the damn line. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Subscripts almost always indicate a specific thing that I was given. Without a subscript, it means anything it could be. Right? Yes? Uh, is this only work for linear uh, This exact thing we're doing, of course, but, but in general you could do things like this with other equations for sure. Yeah. But it won't be exactly like this. But some of the same ideas we can use. Yeah. Um, so what does this mean then? The slope between these would be y minus y1 over x minus x1. And then can't I multiply this up? So this is the other equation of a line. This one we called, uh, where'd it go? This one we call slope intercept. This one we call point slope. So how do I use the damn thing? Well, real quick, just in the interest of time. Eight minus five is three, two minus negative one is three, I get a slope of one, is that cool? You guys with me? Real quick, if I would have done five minus eight, that's negative three, negative one minus two is negative three, negative three divided by negative three is still one. So as long as I subtract in the same direction, I'll get the right sign on my slope. We don't need you, just need a point. Pick a point. Which point do you want to use? Two and eight. Two and eight, I like it. Very good idea. Negatives, you kind of want to stay away from them. It's not a bad idea. So now what do I put in there? Y minus the Y piece of the point. What's the Y piece of the point? Eight. So Y minus the Y piece of the point equals M times x minus the x piece of the point. That's how you use that formula. So now it expands it. I don't need the y-intercept. I can use any damn point they give me. And I'll get y, this is trying to be a minus, equals x minus 2 plus 8, so x plus 6. I don't know if that sounds familiar to anybody. I can give you a bunch of problems that says find the equation of the line that does shit. So what two things do you need? Slope, point. If the point's the y-intercept, kick ass, because then I know b. I don't have to use a big ass function. I can just use the mx plus b one. That's awesome. Okay, that's plenty, guys. I think I got you right up to the amount you can handle. Okay. That's plenty. What is today? Wednesday, so I'll see you tomorrow. Um, We'll just keep going.